It works. It really, really works. Hello and welcome back to Gears and Tech. Today we're going to show you how to use the brand new PlayStation DualSense Edge controller with your Xbox Series S and your Xbox Series X. Some of you may already be asking why the heck would I want to use a PlayStation controller with my Xbox. I'm going to get this out of the way right off the bat. I personally like how the PlayStation 5 controller fits in my hand. I've never gotten used to the Xbox controller layout. It's just not normal for me. I understand there's a lot of people who do use the Xbox controller, who do use a Switch controller, and you guys like that. I've just never gotten used to it. It's who I am, it's what I do, but there's more than just me out there who like these kinds of controllers and who like some of the features of the DualSense Edge controller. The controller has the same DualSense design that you've come to love with your PlayStation 5 system, but they add these adjustable height thumbsticks. So currently I'm running the taller thumbstick on the right analog side and the regular size thumbstick on the left side. So they are fully swappable. You can adjust different heights. The package, it does come with this sweet case, which is PS PlayStation branded, but it comes with a long cord and different back buttons, which you can see there, as well as different thumbsticks. So you can run tall ones, you can run short ones, you can run the OG PlayStation controller thumbsticks. All of that in a sweet little case. I'm gonna put the case over here. This cord is pretty cool. I'm not gonna talk a lot about it, so I'm gonna put that over there. But you heard me say back paddles. Before we get too far into this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel down below. If you've seen some of our content already and have not subscribed, we want you to join our community. Smash that like button, hit subscribe, and let's get back to the video. You heard me say back paddles, which this has. So there's back paddles right here. These are the long ones, which I choose to use, but there are short bumper style ones. They're swapped out magnetically. So you just go like that, and then this one will just pop right in there like that. And then that allows you to, to pull it like that or have this wing style. Like I said, I prefer the longer paddle style one. That's mostly because that's just what I'm used to. It's a personal preference thing and you can swap to the one you want. It feels great in your hands, especially if you're used to a PlayStation 5 controller. Anyway, the other thing that you may have noticed are these little switches back here. Now these switches are trigger stops. So right now they are in the normal position, which means that our triggers, they've got full swing to them but I can go to the full stop position and then it makes it like a short throw clicky trigger. There's also the midpoint and that stops in the middle. I don't know why you want that. I'm a all or nothing kind of guy. The other really neat thing is if you've got long fingernails, you can flick this little switch here and then that releases this guy and this allows me to release this little lever here and then remove the thumbstick modules. So when this develops stick drift, you can just buy a new module, which is about $20, and swap it out and have a brand new controller again without having to buy a brand new controller. But you didn't come here to find out all about the latest PlayStation propaganda. You want to know, does this work with an Xbox? for whatever reason, and what features are available? To do this connection, we are gonna use a special product. You've seen it here before. And that would be this. This is the Wingman XB. Now there's different Wingman models. There's another one that is a Wingman Switch and a Wingman PlayStation. Now XB obviously stands for Xbox. This allows you to plug this into your Xbox just like that and sync up any Bluetooth capable controller and use it with your Xbox. But the big question everybody has is with the new features on the DualSense Edge, do you have the ability to access and use those with your Xbox? So we've got to hook it up. We've got to test this out. Let's have a look. So really to set this up, all you need are these two things. You've got the Wingman XB and you've got the DualSense Edge controller. And obviously you have an Xbox. So all we're gonna do is plug this in right there into the front USB port. You can plug it into the back USB port if you would like, it does not matter. We're gonna just plug it in the front. Now you're gonna turn on your Xbox just like this. Now the thing we're gonna do is push the two buttons on this guy here till the light starts blinking fast. And then we're gonna push the share button and the PS button on here. 
until these lights also start blinking fast like that. And then after a second, they will start to blink slowly. There we go. That has faded to a solid on and that has also stopped blinking. This is now paired to my Xbox. And if I go like this, you can see I am now fully controlling my Xbox. The question you can ask yourself is what features are available just like this? The short answer is really nothing. You will be able to use the trigger stops if you want, but that is about it. These back paddles will not function at this point. For you to get the back paddles working, you must connect this up to a PlayStation 5 system. Quick editor's note. So I've been talking about how you have to use a PlayStation 5 to actually program the controller. Well, in the time that I filmed that video, and time to edit this video, it actually turns out there's a software you can download on Steam. It's called DSX, and what it does is allows you to program the function buttons on your DualSense Edge controller to actually map those back buttons and to adjust those adaptive triggers and the, all of the options that you would normally get on the PlayStation 5 software, it's actually available on your PC. If you are connecting this controller to your Xbox system, you can bypass the need for the PlayStation 5 for the programming and just use this software. Sorry for the confusion, but I wanted to include this in the video so that you guys have all the most relevant information. So in this case, I've set this one to be my X, so this button right here, and I've programmed this one to be my O. There's also the tuning that you have as an option on your analog stick, so you can adjust the curve and the response curve and all of that. You can go and adjust all of those curve settings for the analog sticks right here, and it will save those settings to the controller. So when you go to your Xbox, those settings will be maintained on the Xbox. Also, you have the ability to control your triggers. So you can adjust and fine tune when they actually activate, how far you have to pull to activate. You have full settings of those analog triggers, which again, you can do on the PlayStation software, but to go to the Xbox, it has to be saved onto the controller. Whatever configuration is active on the controller when you take it to your Xbox is the configuration that will be active on your Xbox. I mean, I don't have to actually go into the game. I can just show you like this. If I push this, I will launch the game just like that. And I can push this. Anything that requires the A button will be available. I also can go and push this, which will be my back button. So I can go in with this, and then this guy right here is my back button. So those buttons are working. They're definitely working. I can drop into a game if I want. And what about the headphone jack? Does that work? Let's find out. These are just corded Astro headphones, so I'm gonna just put those on like that. I'm gonna plug this in, and we'll see if we get any sound. No, you don't get sound. And that's because this device does not have the ability to pass audio through here to the controller and then out through the controller. So the only way you get audio here is to either play it through your speakers or get a USB headset that you can plug in and play it through the USB headset. Or if you have an Xbox certified headset, you will also be able to just connect your headset direct from here to your headset. I personally use a SteelSeries headset for my Xbox because it allows me to use it with my Xbox and with my PC and with my PlayStation, which I will put a link in the description for that. But you can see I've got full functionality here. I can go like this to pull my chute. I can go like this to cut my chute. You can see pull my chute, cut my chute, pull my chute, cut my chute. Let's activate the short throw triggers. I'm not going to land in time to show you guys. Now the game is starting. The rumble does work. If you're wondering, does the rumble work? Yes, it does. The touchpad doesn't do anything, but when I push it, I've got my clicky triggers. I got my reload. I can slide. I can dip. I can jump. I can do all that. I can feel the rumble going right now. So I have full functionality here. It all works. What other buttons work? Well, if I push this, it opens up the menu button. So that works. If I push this, it opens up the map. So you have to swap the map button. Let me pull my chute just so that I can be falling. So that'll pull up the map. If I push this, 
nothing. The mic mute button does nothing. The PS button will pull up your Xbox menu. So all of the buttons are fully there. They're fully supported. The back buttons work. Headphones don't work, but there you have it. You can use a DualSense Edge with your Xbox using that device. Now that you've seen the DualSense Edge work on your Xbox system, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Are you gonna give this a try? Do you like what the DualSense Edge has to offer over the Xbox offerings enough to buy another dongle to use this controller with those systems? Or are you gonna stick with your Xbox controller? I know this unlocks a lot of possibilities for a lot of people, but the limitations of this do make it a little bit of a trade-off. And you may be wondering, is the money worth it? I mean, this is an expensive controller. It's about 200 US dollars. And then this guy is gonna cost you 50 to 60 US dollars. So all of that for what? Now, personally, I would probably stay away from this offering and that's because of the limitations. Consider on the other hand something like this which is a B Savior controller. It's also a PlayStation 5 controller but it adds four back buttons. It adds all of the features of the B Savior which we didn't really talk about in this video but the B Savior has this OLED screen. It allows you to map your back buttons on here but you can also remap any of the face buttons to any other face button. So if you don't like the X button being here you can program the triangle button to be your X button. So pushing triangle is the same as pushing X in the game. Okay so it's not X obviously would become unassigned at that point. You'd have to go and assign X to something else. Also spoiler alert I did a head-to-head -head review of these two controllers and in the end I said that the B Savior controller was actually the better bang for the buck. It's cheaper, it offers more functionality, and it is able to be used with an Xbox or with a computer or with your Nintendo Switch or your PlayStation 4. You can use it with all of those again with a special dongle but it at least unlocks that functionality without having to connect to a PlayStation 5 in order to program those buttons. So I think it's a limited use case, but if you did want to do it, this is what you would need and it would get you fully set up to make that work. I will put links in the description to everything we discussed down below. So if you did want to get any of these, you can get them from the links. Hey, thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video. We hope you enjoy the content in this video. and We'd love to have you come back. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And for those subscribers who are looking for that extra special thing that you can do to support this channel, consider joining our members group. That's where we're building this community, the Gears and Tech community, where we can all enjoy content together. You'll get special perks, which we'd love for you to check out by clicking the link down below. For those of you who are just happy to watch the video, that's okay too. You can check out some of our other content right over here, where we've got some previous videos that have already been uploaded and enjoyed by many of our viewers already. We do hope to see you again. This has been Gears and Tech. Have a great day.